Sup chooms. So before we begin today, I do want to show you guys something because as some of you guys know, since I know a lot of gamers watch my channel, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is a sequel to Final Fantasy VII Remake, is coming out at the end of this month. And I am super pumped about it. So to better hype myself up, I have made a small investment. Let me guys show you something. This is the Sephiroth plushie. Look how adorable that is. Just look at this guy and then play One Winged Angel in your head. So I'm very excited about that and I just couldn't resist. I had to show you guys that. But to get to today's subject, one of the reasons I run this channel is that I want to keep fellow hair loss witchers up to date with all the latest hair loss information and research. Some of you chooms have asked me where I get my research and that's a good question, homies. I subscribe to some medical mailing list and I periodically do internet searches to find the latest articles that are relevant to this channel. For some reason, Ever since I did a recent video on Brian Johnson and why he should use finasteride in his quest for immortality, I keep finding new articles that suggest that finasteride is just what he needs to achieve that goal. So I did a follow-up video to my Brian Johnson video after I found that there is very good evidence that finasteride prevents and can treat a very common form of cancer, and I'll link that video below. However, I am not done discussing the longevity benefits of finasteride. No, not even close. That is because there is one life-threatening condition that finasteride I can help with that is even more common than cancer, and that condition is cardiovascular disease. It is the most common cause of death in the entire world. Now, this isn't a new subject on my channel at all. I have already done a video on why DHT is a trash hormone because it causes heart disease, and I'll link that video below. But despite this, people constantly claim that finasteride can actually cause heart disease, or they claim finasteride increases cholesterol levels, or causes type 2 diabetes, which are both risk factors for heart disease. Like most of the fear-mongering about finasteride that you see online, the source of misinformation comes from our old friend Dr. Trash, who is a recurring antagonist in the Hair Cafe cinematic universe. In Dr. Trash's infamous Dark Side of Finasteride article, which I debunked in a video link below, Dr. Trash speculated that the lack of cardiovascular side effects reported in finasteride trials was due to the trials not being designed to look for cardiovascular events. Somehow, I doubt that these FDA-sponsored trials ignored heart attacks in the subjects in the study, but that is what Dr. Trash is actually claiming here. The fact is, is that these trials did not show any evidence of any increase in cardiac events with finasteride usage whatsoever. And that's even with a lot of these trials being done in older men with prostate disease who are at a high risk of heart disease to begin with. So, in his relentless search for finasteride side effects, Dr. Trash wrote another shitty article titled, quote, Health risk associated with long-term finasteride and dutasteride use. It's time to sound the alarm." Unquote. In this trashy paper, Dr. Trash tried to find some research that showed that 5-AR blockers increase cholesterol and diabetes, which are two risk factors for heart disease. Well, he ended up quoting from one of his own studies, specifically this one here. In the study, Dr. Trash looked at a database of men treated for prostate enlargement with either dutasteride or tamsulosin. Dutasteride, of course, is a 5-AR inhibitor, as most of you guys know, and it's a 5-AR inhibitor that is even stronger than finasteride, while tamsulosin, also known as Flomax, is another type of prostate drug that works by blocking nerve impulses to the prostate, so it works completely differently from 5-AR inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride, and it doesn't stop hair loss. So, this was not a randomized perspective controlled study. It was a retrospective analysis. However, presumably to the delight of Dr. Trash, the study showed that being on dutasteride was associated with increased blood glucose levels consistent with diabetes. It also showed that both dutasteride and tamsulosin increased LDL cholesterol levels, which is the bad cholesterol seen in the top graph here. HDL, which is known as the good cholesterol, was flat with dutasteride, but it went up with tamsulosin. Total cholesterol went up with both drugs, albeit more so with tamsulosin than with dutasteride, as you can see from the middle and bottom graphs here. So Dr. Trash concluded from this that dutasteride raised cholesterol, even though tamsulosin did too. And keep in mind, there was no control comparison group in this study. This is especially important considering that cholesterol levels have a strong genetic component to them. For example, look at this table of the baseline characteristics of the two groups. The first column is the overall mean of each parameter. The second column is the value for the subject who started dutasteride, and the third column is the value for the subjects who started tamsulosin. Remember, these are values from before the subject started on either drug. You can see that the baseline values for total cholesterol, LDL and HDL, are not even close to each other. The p-values for the differences are about the lowest I have ever seen. For example, the p-value for the difference in LDL at baseline
line of the two groups is 3.52 times 10 to the negative 33. That's a number with 33 zeros after the decimal point. That's an incredibly small number. The size of an electron is about 10 to the minus 18 meters, which is only 18 zeros after the decimal point. What all that means, Chooms, is that the two groups had different cholesterol, LDL, and HDL levels even before they started the drugs. And this difference was not due to chance. So when you give different drugs to groups that aren't similar to begin with, it's not surprising in the slightest that the results in the two groups would be different. However, the study is even more flawed than that. In the method section, Dr. Trash indicates that 26% of the men were on statins, but the way he words it, it sounds like he is saying that 26% of the men on dutasteride were on statin drugs. However, there are 61 men on statins, and that is 26% of 230 men in the study. So, what Dr. Trash is saying is that 26% of all men in the study were on cholesterol-lowering statin drugs, but Dr. Trash never says how many men were on statins in the dutasteride group versus the tamsulosin group. Since statins affect lipid levels, there's no way to know whether there were possibly more tamsulosin users on statins than dutasteride users, or vice versa, which would affect the outcome of the study. Not only that, that, but Dr. Trash found an increase in liver function test on dutasteride and then blamed it on accumulation of fat in the liver. Well, despite these flaws, Dr. Trash's study has spread in the hair loss forums like broccoli, and even though it was about dutasteride, by implication it was assumed that finasteride too could cause elevated cholesterol and by implication cause heart disease. So, that was why I was especially happy to see a new study that just appeared last month. This study is titled, quote, Finasteride delays atherosclerosis progression in mice and is associated with a reduction in plasma cholesterol in men." Unquote. Now, this is both a mouse study and a human study, so that's a big step up from the usual mouse studies that anti-finasteride people like to rely on to spread their propaganda. Finasteride is a good blocker of the type 2 5-error isoenzyme in human beings, but it has very little effect on the type 1 5-error isoenzyme. In mice, though, finasteride is both a type 1 and type 2 5-error isoenzyme blocker, so it works more like dutasteride in that context. So because of the differences in how finasteride affects rodents compared to human beings, finasteride is actually a good drug to test in mice in order to see if both the type 1 and type 2 blockade of the 5 air enzyme can cause changes in cholesterol metabolism, especially since Dr. Trash was claiming that dutasteride causes elevated LDL cholesterol levels as well as causing diabetes and fatty liver. The mice used in the study were a strain of mice genetically engineered to lack the receptor for LDL cholesterol. What that means is that these mice can't clear LDL cholesterol from their blood, and so when they are given a high-fat diet, they end up with high levels of LDL cholesterol in their blood. In mice, a high LDL cholesterol is all it takes to develop atherosclerosis, and so these mice are used to model human atherosclerosis. This is not a video going into detail about how triglycerides and cholesterol cause heart disease in humans. I'm sure this is going to trigger all the cholesterol denialists out there, but it's clear from animal studies that the only thing you need to do do in order to get atherosclerosis in the first place is to raise up the LDL cholesterol levels. It happens in mice and it happens in humans. Now, since I brought up cholesterol denialism, that is a can of worms I am not going to open today. But I do have a video about that subject coming up in the near future so you can save your outrage until then. Anyways, the mice in the study were treated with different doses of finasteride, with the highest dose being 2.5 milligrams per day of finasteride. This is a higher dose than a human dose, of course, but it is still a commonly used dose level in mouse and rat studies. They also looked at lower doses, such as doses as low as 0.025 milligrams per day of finasteride, which is more comparable when adjusted for weight to a human dose. So after 12 weeks of a mouse diet that mimicked more of a Western human-style diet containing 0.3% cholesterol and 41% fat, the mice were tragically sacrificed in the name of science and then examined. The results were pretty remarkable though. None of the doses of finasteride, even the highest dose, showed any evidence of liver damage. In fact, on the highest dose, there was a decrease in liver size and decreased fats in the liver. The investigators found that, quote, finasteride intake had beneficial effects on hepatic metabolism and that finasteride decreases hepatic inflammation. Also, finasteride-fed mice presented lower fat content in the liver compared to littermates fed a finasteride-free diet, unquote. So all of these findings go completely against what Dr. Trash was claiming about the liver effects of 5-AR blocking drugs. At the highest dose of finasteride, the plasma lipid levels, including VLDL, LDL, and triglycerides all decrease. There was no effect on HDL, which 
which is the good cholesterol. As expected, these mice with elevated LDL cholesterol all developed atherosclerosis. However, the lesions with finasteride were smaller with reduced areas of necrosis, meaning less destruction of the tissue, and there were decreased inflammatory cells in the atherosclerotic lesions. The researchers looked at gene regulation and found decreased inflammatory markers too with finasteride usage. So overall, finasteride at its highest dose decreased atherosclerosis in these mice. So, I'm sure some of you guys are right in the comment section right now, but Kevin, it's just a mouse study, right? Well, a human study was done too. This here is a database study. It's from what's called the N. Haynes database, which is a large survey that was done in the United States that includes a healthcare questionnaire and blood testing. The subjects drawn from the survey were men who were over 50 years of age who had blood lipid panels and other blood work done on them. There were 4,791 subjects and 155 of them were taking finasteride. Comparing the subjects taking finasteride versus those who weren't, finasteride users had lower total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and no different in HDL cholesterol. As you can see in this table here, the total cholesterol in men taking finasteride is considerably lower than the men not taking finasteride. You can see the LDL is much lower too in finasteride users than in non-users in the other table here. And as it turns out, there were other surprising findings in this study too. Blood glucose levels were lower in men on finasteride versus men not on finasteride. These subjects included men with liver conditions, men diagnosed with diabetes, men taking anti-diabetic medications, and men with elevated cholesterol cholesterol levels who weren't taking cholesterol medications. There was no evidence at all in any of these men that finasteride made diabetes worse. So the authors concluded that finasteride, rather than making lipids, diabetes, and heart disease worse as Dr. Trash would like everyone to believe, is actually beneficial at treating all those conditions. The authors state, quote, taken together, our population-based and preclinical studies indicate that finasteride treatment ameliorates plasma lipid profile. Our mouse study also shows that finasteride reduces the the burden of atherosclerosis with an overall positive effect on the liver. Considering that finasteride has been safely prescribed for decades, these results will pave the road towards using finasteride alone or in combination with other medications to tackle cardiovascular disease in people." Unquote. Now, there are limitations to this kind of study, partly because it was a mouse study, but the mouse model used in this study is a very commonly used one, and it has been very predictive in other studies done on human atherosclerosis. But mice aren't human beings, obviously. Also, the human study is not a randomized perspective control study, but neither was Dr. Trash's study, and this study shows the exact opposite conclusions from Dr. Trash's own research. I already pointed out the flaws of Dr. Trash's study. This new study is much better designed than the Trash study by any metric. So, the authors conclude, quote, Regardless of these limitations, our data provide an important stepping stone towards repurposing the use of finasteride for the prevention and treatment of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, unquote. So, once again, and Brian Johnson, if you are watching this video, this is more evidence that you need to add oral finasteride to your longevity stack. The fact that you're taking over 100 pills to extend your longevity and oral finasteride isn't one of them is absolutely preposterous. It would be like spending two hours at the gym every day to build your leg muscles, but never doing barbell squats. It just doesn't make any sense, bro. So I hope you'll reconsider your position and embrace the glorious power of finasteride and your quest for immortality. Because like I've said, dude, I want you to succeed. All right, that's it for now, Hair Loss Witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.